We don't have a plan for coordinated entry of these asylum seekers across the country. And that's really what we want the federal government to do, because we know there is a way to solve this. All right, in our spotlight, as the number of southern border crossings continues to soar, mayors across the country are scrambling to accommodate the busloads of migrants being sent north to cities like New York, Washington, D.C., Chicago, and Denver. Now, you just heard Denver's mayor there in an interview on ABC News Live. Uh, New York's mayor, Adams, is also issuing an executive order that requires charter buses to provide the city at least 32 hours notice prior to their arrival. But officials in Texas and Louisiana appear to be skirting those rules and instead sending buses to... New Jersey. Local officials saying that an estimated 10 buses from Texas and one from Louisiana dropped off about 400 migrants at New Jersey transit stations where they continued into the city by train. I want to bring back our panel here, Mike, Christina, Ramesh, and Rachel. So Ramesh, let's start here with you. Mayors in these Democratic-run cities are now struggling to deal with this influx of asylum seekers. They're being very vocal about it. But in your opinion, is Texas Governor Greg Abbott's plan of busing these migrants to these cities working in terms of highlighting the problem? I, I don't think there's any question. Whatever, Whether you think it was the right or wrong thing to do, it has changed the politics of this issue dramatically. It has put it on the national agenda in a new way and made it not just a border state, border city issue. Um, it's something that has caused Democratic mayors to talk about the strains that illegal immigration creates. It, is, it has made them, you know, sort of put money where their mouths are. Because it was, it was one thing to say you're a sanctuary city when you're not on the front line. Uh, but once you are, it turns out that it, there's a huge burden and getting these, getting a lot of these uh, liberal Democratic mayors even to complain about the issue, and in some cases to complain about the Biden administration, that's something that wouldn't have happened absent the kinds of moves that uh, Governor Abbott and, to a lesser extent, Governor DeSantis have made. And, Christina, I'd love for you to weigh in on what he just said there about how you are starting to see some of these Democratic mayors complain about how the Biden administration is handling this. I mean, how will that change his support in the election? Look, ultimately, I think what most Americans agree and understand is that we need real solutions to the immigration issue in this country, that we can have an uh, immigration system that attacks and addresses the root causes of migration, that we need to protect American-born and immigrant workers, but that these political stunts, because that's really all they are, are political stunts, do nothing to address the issue and solve the problem. And so I live in Texas. Governor Greg Abbott is my governor, and I can tell you all he has done for his entire time in office is play with the lives of refugees and immigrants, many of who are children, instead of actually using his position to call for true reform and overhaul to both honor our rights under international law and give asylum seekers their right and day in court and be able to provide the security and, and uh, support that local communities need. And that's why you're also seeing local communities, even in Texas, turn away from the governor's positions and stances that used to support him on immigration along the border. Well, and what about Congress, Rachel? Let's take that to you. I mean, some people are looking at Congress to fix this. They believe that they can. Are they any closer to a bipartisan bill? Ooh, yeah, Kena, they've been trying to do that for several decades now, and they're trying to do it right now as we speak. Uh, still uh, no cigar on that. I mean, look, I'm really skeptical about a border deal going through for a number of reasons. Number one is the clock. Uh, when Congress comes back next week, they're only going to have a couple of legislative days to avert another government shutdown. They don't have an agreement on top-line spending numbers, let alone line items within each agency. That's going to take up a lot of oxygen. Number two, even if the Senate does come up with some sort of bipartisan agreement. There is no guarantee that it will make it through the Republican-led House. The new speaker, Mike Johnson, he's already in trouble with conservatives right now. And a lot of conservatives are probably not going to like whatever they come up with it in the Senate. They're going to say it's not good enough. So he will face pressure from his own party uh, to say that this deal, you know, he's not going to put it on the floor because, again, it's not good enough. It's just, it's a really tough issue for Congress. And Mike, let's talk about this. In addition to the highest ever recorded migrant encounters at the border, according to Customs and Border Protection, seizures of fentanyl have also increased more than 860 percent compared to 2019. So, Mike, is the federal government putting enough emphasis on border security in addition to the crossings? 
I don't think we're giving enough nuance to the conversation of, of fentanyl and the aspect of it. It's just not a one-prong strategic solution just to focus mm -hmm. on the border. Uh, you also, too, have to focus in on China and how you can get diplomatic ties to work in collaboration with the United States uh, and with the government of Mexico in order to address fentanyl uh, coming over the border. And so to look at it from a binary binaries position, I think that doesn't do service to addressing the root cause of the issue of fentanyl actually coming here. And Ramesh, do you want to respond to that? Well, look, I think that the fentanyl has become such a gigantic epidemic in our country that it has to be attacked on multiple fronts. And absolutely, that includes China and includes a lot of domestic things, including expanding treatment facilities, expanding access to Narcan. But the Mexico border with the U.S. is absolutely part of the equation that has to be tackled, as is, as is U.S.-Mexican government cooperation. You know, the Biden administration has been working to try to get that. I think one of the things we are seeing in this crisis at the border is that Biden, you know, look, there were all kinds of disagreements they had with Trump over immigration, a lot of them justified, a lot of them arguable, but they threw out Remain in Mexico because of pure ideology and partisanship, and that has been, I think, a fundamental cause of the problem that we're seeing right now. All right, and a lot if I to could be just solved add, here. My, yeah, my, Christina, please. My, Mike's point, you know, to go back, I think the point to add on to what Mike was saying, you have to divorce the discussion about immigration from fentanyl because most fentanyl is actually not coming through migrants. So it's a disservice to communities that are suffering from addiction and family members who have lost them to not actually talk about how fentanyl is getting into this country, which is mostly through legal means of trade, not through immigrants. It's supply right, chain. Mike. Christina, what she's saying? Yeah, and most of it's coming over from the Mexican border. They are saying that U.S. citizens are trafficking it, but they're looking at the cartels there in Mexico. And the precursors, as Ramesh said, are coming over from China. So clearly a huge problem there. Uh, Mike, Christina, Ramesh, and Rachel, our thanks to you, as always. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.